Things are looking good here inside Flash. We see that Flash really handled the Illustrator layout very well and maintained a lot of the content and a lot of the, I guess you could say the setup that we did back in Illustrator. But did you notice here that our photo, the sort of the main photo inside our layout, lost that white stroke, that white stroke that you and I had worked so hard to achieve back in Illustrator, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how we can go about fixing this. And we're gonna fix it with Photoshop actually. Now, you know, in the real world, if we really wanted to fix this, what we would do is we would go back to Illustrator and we would rasterize that object, right? Remember we got a warning about that when we were trying to import our layout? We got a warning on this graphic specifically about needing to rasterize it, right? That it wasn't compatible. Well, it was that stroke effect that was incompatible with Flash, right? So you'll find that as you're moving things between Illustrator and Flash, there's some things that Flash just doesn't understand, right? Can't handle. Okay, so as I say, in the real world, we would scrap this file, go back to Illustrator, fix it, and re-import it into Flash. But if we were to do that right now, then I wouldn't be able to show you some of the cool things that you can do between Flash and Photoshop. So we're going to fix this guy in Photoshop, and this is going to give me an opportunity to show you a couple of neat things in terms of how Flash and Photoshop are going to integrate together. So I want to go and find this, this photograph here inside my library panel. He's the image inside the content folder, by the way. So you might have to do some expanding here. Look for the content folder and look for your image there. Now, check this out. I'm going to right click on this guy and wouldn't you know, edit with Adobe Photoshop CS5. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Now, conveniently, I already have Photoshop running in the background. <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> there you go. So I hope you have Photoshop. Go ahead and right click on him there in the library. Pop him open inside Photoshop. Now, the way that I'm going to fix this here is I'm just going to use a layer effect here inside Photoshop. And really, again, the purpose of this exercise is not to show you how to create a stroke in Photoshop. It's more about showing you how Flash is going to handle imported content, how Flash and Photoshop are going to get along, I guess you could say. So here we go. I'm going to keep the, 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 the fixing aspect of this, of this lesson to a minimum here, fixing the stroke. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and adjust my canvas size. So I'm going to go to the image menu and then down to canvas size, command option C or control alt C if you wish there on the PC side. And I'm going to increase my canvas size. Now make sure that your unit of measurement is pixels. And I'm going to set my width to 361 and my height to 199. That will accommodate the stroke that we're about to apply here. So go ahead and apply that. Go ahead and set that. You'll notice that behind the photograph, we get the Photoshop checkerboard pattern indicating transparency. There's nothing behind this photograph. Now what I'm going to do is inside the layers palette, notice this isn't a background layer, by the way. It's layer zero. It's a, a fully editable layer, I guess you could say, or a normal layer inside Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click over on the right hand side of layer zero. And that gets me into the layer style dialog box. And we're going to go and set our stroke here. So down to the last option there on the right hand side there, stroke. Our stroke size is going to be seven pixels. The position is going to be center. So not on the outside, not on the inside, but the center. And then the color, go ahead and click on that color swatch and go and set a, a white color. I guess you could use whatever color you want, but I'm going to stick with what we had tried to do in Illustrator. So I'm going to go with white here and then OK and then OK one more time. OK, wonderful. So there's the layer effect now applied to the Photoshop file, right? OK, now the next thing that I want to do is I want to get this updated back in Flash. Now, this is where things get a little weird. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this guy. So right now I have a fully editable layer with a fully editable layer effect. I'm going to flatten this, though. I'm just going to go up to the layer menu and then all the way down to the bottom and choose flatten image. So it's no longer editable there. And I'm going to save the guy, Command S or Control S, flip back over to Flash and boom. There's the update, just like that. How do you like them apples? <laughs> okay, so I hope it updated for you, by the way. But the big question is, 
what the heck just happened? <laughs> How did that work? What, what's going on here? So if I look over inside the library panel, notice that the, the photo or the graphic that we were working on is no longer just labeled image like the other two imported graphics are. It's now image hyphen one hyphen one hyphen one dot PNG or dot ping. What's that all about? Well, check this out. I'm gonna right click on this guy and I'm gonna go down to properties. I wanna try and figure out what's going on here. Inside the properties dialog box that appears, there's a bunch of options in here, of course, but there's also the path or the directory structure telling us where image hyphen one hyphen one hyphen one dot PNG is saved. It's buried way down inside my system directory somewhere. It's almost like a temp file or something, right? Which is a little weird. So it is working, but I mean, if I have to ever go and find this file, I mean, it's gonna be a nightmare to go and find this guy, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cancel out of this guy, out of that dialog box. I'm gonna head back over to Photoshop and I'm just gonna change where this guy's saved. I'm just gonna go file and then down to save as. I'm gonna navigate up to the project files folder on my desktop. And I suppose I could leave this guy as a PNG or I could change his file format maybe to a JPEG or a TIFF or whatever. But I think in, in that regard, I'm gonna leave well enough alone. The only thing I am gonna change is the file name here. I'll call this main photo or something like that. Okay, there we go. And save it up. Click on okay. All right, now what I wanna do inside Flash is I wanna change this photo, this is the, the version, if you will, of the PNG that's buried way in my directory somewhere. And I wanna replace that with the version that's sitting inside the project files folder on my desktop so that in the future, I know exactly where the file is, right? Should I need to make changes to it. So back inside the library panel, look for your PNG, right click on that guy, go down to properties, and then inside this properties dialog box, click on import. In other words, what we're doing is we're, we are replacing one file with another file, right? There's the version that I just saved out, mainphoto.png, click on open, flash loads it in, looks exactly the same, of course, right? And then go ahead and click on okay. All right, now no real change in terms of the visual aspects of our flash movie or our flash interface, but what has changed is I've now connected Flash up to the file that's sitting on my desktop, right? Or inside the project files folder sitting on my desktop. So now I know where that guy is, right? So there you go, pretty cool stuff. And now this guy's automatically linked up so that if I go back to Photoshop and I make some additional changes and simply save Command S or Control S, then he's gonna automatically update here in Flash.